so we're moving on to some more wonderful speakers and special guests. It's my great honor and pleasure to now introduce two-time Academy Award winning actor and producer, Mr. Michael Douglas, who also is a great humanitarian and serves as a UN messenger of peace. Uh, good morning again, Professor Sachs and my fellow partners. Um, as a United Nations messenger of peace, I often reflect on how the UN is a unique home address for the entire human family, a place where we means everyone. As the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says, without distinction of any kind, is a place founded on a moral vision of a world of equality, free from fear, want, and war. And I remind us that we share this home all together. And this year, through the collective wisdom of the, world, of the world's nations, the UN General Assembly, guided by the leadership of Bahrain, thank you, adopted Resolution 73-329, promoting the culture of peace with love and conscience, which establishes the International Day of Conscience. Now, it is surprising in a time of so much cynicism, dysfunctional adversity, and discord for a political instrument to so strongly articulate our highest values, peace, love, and conscience. And these precious human capacities are so needed to address so many threats to our family's well-being, such as climate change, environmental degradation, gross poverty, and nuclear weapons. The UN Charter calls us to, quote, to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. And today, humanity is engaged in a war, but it is a real, it is not between any nations or peoples. It is a war against all nations and all peoples. And it's a war which cannot be won by all the world's armies, despite the nearly $2 trillion spent on their weapons last year nor by the over 14,000 nuclear bombs through which nine states pursue security daily and a persistent, irrational, hazardous threat of use. It's a war waged by COVID-19, a microscopic virus, too small for the eye to see, but powerful enough to compel us to think about and knew about ourselves. And we may be socially distant, we are all feeling a common sense of vulnerability. Anyone tuned to the voice of conscience can recognize that what binds us together far exceeds any issues that should lead us to violence. Conscience reminds us that no woman, nor man, nor nation is an island. We must now call upon government leaders to bring global conscience into action to address the present threat to human security. The world's most powerful nations must put aside their differences and convene and utilize the power of the UN Security Council to bring reality to the recent General Assembly resolution calling for, quote, intensified international cooperation to contain, mitigate, and defeat the COVID-19 disease. The resolution creating the special day makes specific reference to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article one states, quote, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, and they are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. The resolution calls us to go beyond the spirit of brotherhood into the active expression of love. The declaration calls us to advance it through teaching and education. And I suggest supporting the civil society initiative being championed by the Global Security Institute to obtain a general assembly resolution encouraging every ministry of education to ensure to the best of their ability that every secondary school child be given either physically or electronically a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and when possible, classroom enforcement of its contents. I also wish to bring a specific matter of conscience before us. On October 18th, 2018, 
the UN Humanitarian Rights Commission affirmed that the threat of use of nuclear weapons is incompatible with respect for the right to life and may amount to a crime against humanity, end of quote. And further, that states must also pursue in good faith negotiations in order to achieve that aim of nuclear disarmament under strict and effective international controls. Taking away the adversity inherent in the human rights violating threat of nuclear annihilation, educating the next generation of the importance of the rights and dignity of every precious life would be a step to advancing a culture of peace and an expression of love. Thank you.